All right, with that, it is now time for me to turn things over to Julie. Uh, Julie is going to be working with you all on the congressional update and appropriations process. And she um, has been a great partner to SBA. We have been on the Hill with her for many years. And to be honest with you, I can't imagine doing this without her. So Julie, here's my handoff to you. Take it away, kid. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. It's great to be with all of you. As Sarah said, I'm sorry we're not here together. I'm sorry we're not walking the halls of Congress together, but I'm excited for the advocacy that's going to take place in the next couple of days. And do know that however your voice is communicated to the Hill, it will be a huge boost to our legislative efforts. So thank you in advance. And I look forward to hearing about all the advocacy that you all do over the next few days. I'm going to just provide a brief congressional update. As we like to say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Like the rest of the country, Congress too has been turned on its head. And as you all probably know, we love to talk in acronyms in DC. So we have new acronyms that we've introduced to our vocabulary. We have BC before Corona, and we have AC after Corona. So let's just talk a little bit about before Corona. The time period was January until early March. Seems like a lifetime ago. At that point, 2020 was seen as a time for limited legislative activity with most energy focused on the election. And there was a limited agenda focused on appropriations as well as drug pricing and surprise billing. Now we're into AC, that's after COVID-19. Mid-March onward, not surprisingly, the lawmakers are consumed by a COVID-19 response. The significant legislative activity has been oriented toward the pandemic response, particularly supporting healthcare providers and economic relief and stimulus. Not surprising, coronavirus and the response dominates all things Washington. There is some good news on the legislative front. Congress is set to return to Washington on May 4th, and the FY 2021 appropriations is happening. Much of Washington has been paused, but thankfully the spending bills, which is the appropriations, are continuing as they always do. I'm gonna to speak to you a little bit about the appropriations process now. What are appropriations? Appropriations are annual decisions made by Congress about how the federal government spends some of its money. In general, the appropriations process addresses the discretionary portion of the budget, military spending, research funding, health programs, but excludes the mandatory spending such as Medicare and Social Security, which is spent automatically according to formulas. How is the level of appropriations determined? Under current law, after the president submits his budget, which in a normal year, however normal Washington can be, would be early to mid-February. This year it was later, given everything else that's happening. After the president submits his budget, the House and Senate budget committees craft a budget resolution that allots a total amount of money for the appropriations committee. Once they receive these allocations, the House and Senate Appropriations Committees set allocations to divide total appropriations among the 12 subcommittees. What subcommittee is most relevant for spina bifida? The Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services and Education, informally referred to as Labor H or Labor HHS, is the subcommittee of most interest to the spina bifida community. This subcommittee funds the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, and the National Institutes for Health, NIH. Specifically, this subcommittee allocates dollars to the National Center for Birth Defects and Developmental Disabilities, which houses the National Spina Bifida Program. 
the only federal program solely dedicated to spina bifida. Now I want to share a brief history of spina bifida and appropriations. As Sarah said, we have spent many years traipsing the halls of Congress, advocating for our appropriations agenda. And we are gaining traction year after year. And hopefully with your help this year, that traction will be even more formidable than it has been. The funding for the National Spina Bifida Program has remained level or the same for the last six years, about $6 million. And really when the same dollar amount is provided for six straight years, the truth is that less money is given as there is no accounting for inflation during the appropriations process. Yes, it's discouraging, but at least the spina bifida program has not experienced cuts as many programs have over the last few years. And last year, we really turned the corner in terms of the process. We made great strides and we're hoping to build on that momentum this year with your help. Last year, fiscal year FY 2020, we always advocate for the year ahead. So this year's dollars that we're advocating for will be used in next year's budget. So appropriations for fiscal year FY 2020. For the first time ever, the US House of Representatives appropriated 8 million to the National Spina Bifida Program. The big bump was due in large part to the excellent advocacy of the Spina Bifida community. Sadly, the Senate appropriated only 6 million, and when the two subcommittees, House and Senate, conferenced, the number remained at that same level of 6 million. Don't despair. We're in the midst of FY 2021, and we've made great progress in our quest for additional funding for this year. As we did last year, we've requested 8 million, money that would be used for rec registry expansion, staffing, and allow for us to focus on issues like sudden death and sepsis death among our community. Together with Sarah and Sheila and Nora, we've met with staff from 25 House and Senate offices, all members of the Appropriation Committee. We've met with key committee staff, the majority and minority directors of the subcommittees who oversee the appropriations we're interested in. And we've met with other friends. We've met with the chairs of the Spina Bifida Caucus, and we've met with two members of Congress who have relatives with Spina Bifida. We've submitted our appropriations forms. This is standard operating procedure. We have to make an argument to every member of the House and Senate who we are interested in for increased dollars. And this week, we have the benefit of your help in the process. And truly, if this were happening in any normal year, the appropriations process would be pretty much put to bed. So I find a huge silver lining in the timing of this virtual till on the hill, because your voice will make a critical difference in the amount of dollars that hopefully will come down the pike. Tomorrow, some of you will take part in phone meetings with Senate staff. We've targeted those senators on the Senate Labor, HHS, and Education Appropriations Subcommittee. Some of you will reach out to members of your member, to your member of Congress in the US House of Representatives. And we will share details of how to get in touch with your member or whether or not you're participating in a phone call. And we have scripts for you and all of the contact information. And again, I'm happy to answer any and all questions related to the specifics of those meetings once this presentation is done. There are many challenges to advocating this year. I should add that there are always challenges to advocating this year, but given Corona, uh, it makes advocating even more of a challenge. We have to recognize that engaging on topics outside of the coronavirus is gonna be a challenge threading the needle between focusing on our important priorities while being mindful of the bigger picture. We have to make appropriate connections between spina bifida and the CDC and COVID-19 concerns. 
that should not be too challenging given the important profile CDC now has given COVID-19. It will be easier in certain senses to make our argument more cogent about the critical need for CDC funding. We also have to recognize the challenges members and staff are facing. They are working remotely. Some have gone back to live with their parents. They don't have the technology they would be privy to if they were on the Hill. Some of them are facing illnesses and other challenges. That said, we're excited about the response that the Senate staff had in our request for meetings. So we are basically batting a thousand with one meeting happening in the next few weeks. The ask, the appropriations ask. As we said earlier, your voice, however it is communicated to the Hill, is such an important component to our ask. We're gonna ask to, for you all to support an appropriation of 8 million to fund the National Spine and Bifida Program at the CDC for FY 2021. And in communicating to your member of Congress, you can elaborate by saying that this money will go a long way toward expanding the National Spine and Bifida Registry, securing much needed staff, and allowing for the resources necessary to investigate many issues of concern to our community, including the incidence of sudden death and sepsis death in our population. Looking ahead, well, hopefully this picture speaks a thousand words as well, and in hopefully sooner than later, we will see a country and a Congress turn right side up. We're hopeful that the appropriations bills will be voted on and that we will see an increase in funding. And we're hopeful that other key pieces of legislation germane to the spine and bifida community will move toward passage. And with that, I am more than happy to answer any and all questions. All right, um, so far we have one question, Julie, and that is, will we be able to send emails if we aren't on a phone call? And the answer to that, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll answer that one if you don't mind. Of course. Is, yes, you will be able to. In fact, um, make sure that you are on today's webinar and listen to the section around one click, because there's a great way that you can get into one click and, and do that. But you can, even if you're not on a scheduled phone call, we sent out um, scripts to people who indicated that they'd like to make a phone call on their own. Um, and so if that's something you're interested in, then you can talk with us after the webinar, send us an email either to me or to Sheila, and we can get that script to you so that you can make a phone call on your own uh, and leave a message um, uh, with one of the staffers um, on the Hill or a few of the staffers on the Hill actually. Um, so yes, the answer is you can send an email and you can make a phone call on your own even if you're not on one of the scheduled phone calls. Um, and it, when do we start our calls to our leaders? Um, so Sheila at the end of the day is gonna do a wrap up that talks about the next steps. Um, we are planning, if there are calls that are scheduled for groups, those are taking place tomorrow. People who are participating in those should have already received an email for those, um, uh, as well as um, some information. So those are already set. As far as um, if you're calling uh, a member of Congress's office on your own, not in a group, um, and are interested in that script, like I said, please contact me or Sheila and we'll get that to you so that you can have that information, do that on your own. Um, and with the calls tomorrow, do we have specific time to call or just any time? I received the email, but there was no time. Well, if you received an email and there was no time, then we missed something in the email and I do apologize for that. Um, so we will relook at those emails and make sure, um, because they are specific times, we do have a, a schedule um, uh, Julie, is there anything you want to say about that schedule tomorrow? Well, I, I just want clarification. Uh, the scheduled calls for the Senate or when we had suggested people call uh, their member of the House? Um, 
I, from this question, I don't know the answer. So why don't you talk about both of those? So my suggestion for those who are not taking part in the Senate calls and have been or will receive information about the member of Congress, the health legislative person and all the contact information. Generally, the folks will be available between nine and five. That's not a guarantee that you will actually get a live person, but voicemail and their checking voicemail is done throughout the day. So my suggestion on that front is that you make the call sometime between nine <clears throat> and five. As far as the Senate meetings, as Sarah said, you should have received information about those calls that have been scheduled. Uh, there are eight Senate meetings scheduled between 10 and three. And like I said, and like Sarah said, if you did receive information that you were participating in a call with a staff person from a U.S. Senator and there's no time on that, let us know and we will get back to you at the specific time. Thanks, Julie. <clears throat> Uh, there's a question in here that I'll answer is, is there data on the increase in sudden death and sepsis, sudden death and sepsis death? The answer is no. Part of the reason we're asking for the increase is so that CDC has the funding in which to answer that question. Um, we've asked them to look into it. They've been asked to by Congress, but without the funding to be able to do so, they can't. It means they have to pull them off, pull somebody off of something else that they're doing in order to do that. And some of that may have had funding that's attached to it, so they really cannot do that. So that's the reason the funding request is, is imperative at this point in time. Um, there's a question from someone who said, should I mention that I tested positive for COVID-19 and I fought it off? Would that hurt or help my argument? What are your thoughts on that, Julie? I think depending on your level of comfort, it's just, uh, you know, it does illustrate that you have uh, a health condition and that now you have another health condition. And if you're willing to talk about the complications involved in seeking care or if you experienced any um, health care advice or had challenges because you had spina bifida, I think it makes your argument that the fractured medical system is alive and well even more obvious and that the need to coalesce around a medical system that examines spina bifida in its entirety and is less fractured is critical. What do you think, Sarah? I think that's probably wise. I think um, if, it, if it looks like it bolsters our argument, and I think it's a good use of, of time and effort. So I think it's probably worth doing. Um, and I, and I certainly don't, I'm sorry, I certainly don't think you're going to be penalized for sharing that aspect of your story. I don't think you're going to, I don't no. think there's any stigma associated with having COVID-19. I think that if it added to your healthcare challenges and it compounded some of the difficulty in accessing care, then to Sarah's point, just further illustrates the need to revamp our medical system to care for adults with spina bifida. Right. Um, I have a question from someone who said, I had an email with my Congress member as well. It just said to call or email, how do I know if it's a group call? So I'm not quite sure what they're asking, but I'm gonna take a stab at this. I think they're saying they got an email from us about a member meeting with a member of Congress. But I think a lot of it depends on the kind of email that you got. If there was a script attached, then that was if you signed up and said that you would like to call your member of Congress office. Um, and that script is a suggested script to use when you call and either speak to someone or leave a message. If you are a part of a group that's meeting with the Senate, you would have received a much different email that would have given you call-in information. It would have given you who else, it would have told you, you know, what member you were meeting with at what time. It would have had much more distinct information in it. So 
If you got just an email that just has a script attached to it, that means we're suggesting that you call whenever you want to um, between business operating hours at Capitol Hill, which is dealer center 9 to 5, 9 a.m., 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and you can do that whenever you want to on your own. If you're meeting with a member of, Senate, of uh, the Senate staff, um, those are scheduled calls, and those calls would have received call-in information. So there would have been a, a conference call number and a dial-in and a, a ID number attached to it. So there are very distinct emails, and so it just depends on which one you received. Sarah, let, let me just clarify. Maybe this will help. There are eight meetings, phone meetings scheduled with senators. They are, if, so if you are from one of the following states and had volunteered that you wanted to participate in a meeting, then you will, should have received an email detailing that conference call. The states are Mississippi, Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, Florida, uh, now, I'm, see, I thought I was so confident telling you, Alabama, um, West Virginia, what state am I missing, Sarah? Um, uh, all right, well, I'll come back to that eighth state, but those are the, those are the states uh, that are scheduled with staff from the senators from those states. So if you're from any of the other states not mentioned, then chances are you received an email with a general script for calling your member of Congress. And those are scheduled tomorrow. They're scheduled um, tomorrow they between between 10 and three. We have eight meetings. Alabama just came through. So I'm not certain that that information about calling in has gone to the Alabama folks, but it will go sometime today. It's, it's, it just went out. Okay, so. All right, so hopefully that answers the question um, in some way that makes sense to, to Hannah. Um, Melissa uh, and Melissa asked if we received an email to make a call. Is it clear whether we are in a group or on our own? Again, I go back to if you received a call, if you received an email with call-in information, specific call-in information, a number and uh, an ID, a meeting ID number, then you are in a call that is scheduled with a member of the Senate staff. If you received an email that just has a script on it, that is whether that is dependent upon you to decide when you want to make your phone call. You're not in a group. Um, and what is one click? Is it something I need to download or install? The answer is you don't have to. You just have to go in and create a username and password. That's all you have to do. Um, and you'll get some information on that later in the presentation today on on how all that works. Um, someone, Kara O'Neill, has said that she marked that she wanted to be a call but never got an email. So we'll look into that, Kara, and get back to you. Um, is Maine, Massachusetts participating? Um, I'm not quite sure what you're what you're asking, um, but um, you're more than welcome to call your members of Congress and leave messages. Um, I, I don't think anyone from Massachusetts is on appropriation, so those were the, the meetings that we scheduled. So therefore, uh, we're not doing calls, group calls with um, Massachusetts representatives or senators, um, but you're more than welcome to do that individually. All right, with that. Okay. Can we receive a general script email even if we don't sign up? Um, let me talk with Sheila and we will see what we can do about getting that out to all the participants in case they want to. And someone comes back and says, South Carolina, is it that the eighth state? Or yes, thank state? you. Yes, 
Senator okay. Lindsey Graham, <laughs> thank you. You get the prize. <laughs> All right, so with that, um, there are several more questions, but unfortunately we have reached our time at this point in time. Um, like I said, we will see if we can get, um, get the scripts out to everybody so that they can see that. And for those of you who have calls with a Senate staff member, um, you should be receiving an email about direction on on how those are going to go. So um, I'll, we'll get back to you guys in terms of uh, what the specifics of each of those um, meetings will look like. So, all right. Uh, with that, we're going to take a, a we're going to move right into our. We had really meant to go to lunch here, 